Waiting on a decision why the verdict in the Bolsa triple murder trial is delayed. Also on the early news, coincidence or political ploy? MRU releases a profile on one of its high profile alumni the same day she calls the election. It was a beautiful day today with a high in the mid-teens, but will it continue? We'll let you know in a seven-day forecast. Two great goalies going head-to-head -head tonight at the Dome. How does Calgary's Kipper match up against the Kings' quick netminder? Now from Global Calgary, the early news with Linda Olson. Good evening. They have been deliberating for two days, but still no verdict from the jury at a high-profile triple murder trial. They're deciding the fate of Rial Honorio, who faces three counts of first-degree murder in the New Year's Day 2009 shooting at Bolsa Restaurant. But this morning, they stopped deliberations. Nancy Hicks joins us live from the Calgary Court Centre. Nancy, the jury asking for some additional information. That's right. This morning, jurors made a request to view the transcripts of testimony from the Crown's two star witnesses in this case. A man we can only identify as M.M. was granted immunity in exchange for his testimony in both Real Honorio's trial and the trial for Nathan Zuccarato and Michael Roberto, who were convicted in the case last fall. M.M. testified he told police about the plot to kill rival gang member Sanjeev Men before it happened. He also told court about his role on the actual day of the murders, New Year's Day 2009. It took some time for those transcripts to be prepared and copied for the jury. The Queen's Bench Justice also warning the jury to make sure they review the transcripts in their entirety, not just looking at bits and pieces. So the jury will now, and uh, they are continuing to deliberate uh, today. If they go into late evening, they'll likely go till about 9 o'clock. And then if it does go that late, they would take a break for the night, be sequestered back in the hotel they're staying at, and then begin again in the morning. So really no idea when they would be back, but we will have the latest for you when it becomes available. Thanks, Nancy. You're welcome. New details are emerging about a seasoned Alberta teacher who pled guilty to sexual assault. Alberta Education now confirms Ken McCaffrey was previously flagged in the education system following a complaint. Last month, he pled guilty to a historic case of sexual assault dating back to the 1980s, which took place in McLennan, Alberta. However, McCaffrey taught across the province, including here in Calgary at West Island College, raising concern they could, there could be more victims. That's the other part that it brings up is that a lot of perpetrators are not big scary monsters that are hiding in our closets and they don't look a certain way. We are always concerned that the potential exists for other victims. So we would certainly encourage any victims uh, of Mr. McCaffrey to come forward uh, to tell their stories. McCaffrey abruptly retired from West Island College in 2009 after the allegations came to light. Red Deer RCMP charging a caregiver with fraud after a senior she worked for was bilked out of more than $100,000. It happened between May 2009 and October 2011. The victim is in her 90s and the fraud was detected by a family member who noticed discrepancies and went to police. 42-year-old Kimberly Blackburn has been charged with five counts of fraud and Seven counts of theft. We are three days into the provincial election campaign, a race that is expected to be the tightest ever. But are Albertans interested? The last election saw the lowest voter turnout in history. Just four out of every ten Albertans came out to vote. And a new Ipsos Reid poll shows only moderate voter excitement this time around. About half of those polled agreed with the statement, the upcoming election will be the most exciting in many years, about 30 percent. Also, a bit of a gender divide. More more men are excited about the election, with 57% supporting the statement, compared to 39% of women. Alison Redford spending the day in Fort McMurray. She announced that if re-elected, her party will invest $3 billion over 20 years to improve oil sands technology and environmental outcomes. The Wild Rose Party campaigning in Edmonton, where Danielle Smith took issue with the comment Redford made last night about wanting to change the character of Alberta. I think it's quite clear 
that uh, Albertans want to have a premier that loves this place, that respects this place, and doesn't want to change this place. I think Ms. Redford doesn't like Alberta all that much. Meantime, the Liberals also spending the day in the capital. Raj Sherman talking about his ideas for improved seniors' care, saying his party would make a $400 million investment for home care and make senior care a priority in the legislature. And NDP leader Brian Mason visited an Edmonton home to talk about power prices. He says if elected, they would regulate electricity rates to stabilize prices. They'd also make power corporations pay for transmission lines. An ethics complaint being launched with Elections Alberta against a Mount Royal University publication. It claims the publicly funded school is providing partisan support to Allison Redford. The alumni magazine Reflections features Redford, a graduate, on its front cover. The magazine was released on Monday, the same day Redford announced the provincial election. A Calgary man says the timing and the content of the article should be investigated. The judgment around the release of um, such an article during the election period using taxpayers' um, um, funded dollars is extremely poor judgment at the best case scenario. MRU says it publishes the magazine twice a year in March and September. The university adding the timing is just a coincidence and it began working on the article back in October. The U of C teaming up with universities across Alberta encouraging students to vote. Really excited to announce is that we have rallied up over 10,000 university students across Alberta um, to pledge to vote in the upcoming provincial election. Organizers of the Get Out the Vote campaign will use text and email to remind students to participate. The campaign was created to correct the idea that young people don't vote and to ensure student issues are a priority in this election. Here's a live shot outside right now. 13 degrees here in Calgary. Nice to get into the double digits, Paul. It certainly was. Yeah, beautiful day today. Lots of sunshine officially. The airport hit 14 degrees. Here's another view. This is from the camera we have mounted on the bottom of uh, Global One, of course. Kathy McDonald behind the controls giving us this great shot. You notice the lack of snow in that shot. There were some showers to the south of us. Bands of uh, precipitation going through the province. One there, another there, and yet another one out here and one out in the Pacific. These are coming across in that south southwesterly flow 14 at the airport right now the official high temperature south southwest winds it will go southwesterly at about 20 overnight tonight our low temperature will be zero tomorrow afternoon we're up to 12 and it looks like a windy day as well more coming up in your seven day forecast details thanks paul you're welcome if you get a phone call from Reader's Digest saying you've won their sweepstakes, don't believe it. Rhonda Adams has entered the Reader's Digest sweepstakes for years. So when she got a call from someone claiming she had won, she thought it might be for real. She says they wanted to come to her home to deliver the check, take her to the bank, and then out for dinner. It was only when they asked for a shipping and handling fee that she realized it was not legit. And when he said that, I just told him that he lost me. He had me up to that point and that my two sons who were Calgary City police officers and that ended the phone call. Reader's Digest says they never contact winners by phone. They send a registered letter by priority courier with a phone number to call. The next grand prize draw is in February 2013 for $250,000. A truck crash sending millions of dollars in coins all over the highway. We'll show you what happened. And just days before a fundraiser for a local women's shelter, an unexpected step back. This program is brought to you in part by Remax. Now search properties on your mobile device. Outstanding agents, outstanding results. You're one of a kind. You zig when everyone else zags. Schedule when everyone else schedules. And when it comes to your car, you want options that make it a little more you. Like a Jimongous Vista roof. Oh! Not recommended for werewolves. Or active park assist. Look, Ma, no hands. Love to hear yourself talk? Get my Ford Touch with voice-activated navigation. Car, take me to the theater. Now get up to a thousand bucks towards the options you want. Plus, zero percent financing or up to five and a half G's in rebates. But hop to it, because it ends soon. The custom car event, only at your Ford store.
limited time only at The Brick. Get a Sealy sleep set for under $500. The Sealy Eurotop sleep set with an all foam core and a memory foam comfort layer is only $4.99. Hurry for a limited time while quantities last. If you were building the perfect laptop, you'd use carbon fiber and machined aluminum to make it more beautiful and more durable. You'd use edge-to-edge -edge Gorilla Glass for a stunning display in a more compact form. And you'd choose an Intel Core i7 processor for maximum processing power. Everything that you could ever want in a laptop. Introducing the Dell XPS 13 Ultrabook. Everything and more. Jeff here was personally chosen to be the owner of this fountain tire. Why? Because he's personally committed to giving you the best service. That's why Jeff is right here, on the spot, ready to help you himself. Now, right, Jeff? Je Jeff? At Fountain Tire, the owners, like Jeff, provide personalized service so you'll keep coming back and even recommend us. See? That's poetry in motion right there. Not exactly Shakespeare, but uh, so close. It's like something out of a dream, a bizarre crash in Ontario, leaving millions of dollars worth of coins scattered all across a highway. The loonies and toonies falling out of a Brinks truck that crashed into a rock face around 4 a.m., seriously injuring two men inside. That set off a chain reaction involving a truck carrying candy, which also spilled onto the road. Magnets are being used to pick up all the coins. Another down day for market watchers today, continuing a negative trend this week. The TSX dropped a whopping 98 points to close at 12,414. Not much better for the Dow, also down 72 points. The price of oil plummeted nearly $2 a barrel. Natural gas off two cents to 227. And the loony slipped a bit again, closing just above par with the US dollar. A new budget set to be unveiled in Ottawa, and we are bracing for deep cuts. The federal finance minister set to slash $7 billion from discretionary spending tomorrow. That high number comes as a surprise. Many economists expected an improving fiscal position would allow the government to keep cutbacks at the low end of the $4.8 billion range. Global Nationals' Donna Friesen is hosting a live Budget 2012 special. You can catch that tomorrow at 2 p.m. Controversial MP Rob Anders has been booted off the Veterans Affairs Committee, something critics have been demanding since he fell asleep during a meeting last month. After being criticized, Anders called two war veterans NDP hacks. The longtime MP from Calgary West did apologize, but he has now been reassigned to the Scrutiny of Regulations Committee, considered the most boring committee on Parliament Hill. 512, 13 degrees. Paul Dunphy has more on the weather forecast. Looks not too bad for a couple of days, Paul. Yeah, tomorrow looks very nice, Linda. Very much like today. Maybe not quite as warm, but uh, today was an extraordinary day, really. 14 degrees. Normally we are at 8 at this time of year. 14, not a record. The record high for today is 21 degrees, and the record low minus 27. 13, Calgary International at the moment. South wind.